if the T-Roc is good value for money, then the Tygo must be a real bargain. Hello guys, welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now, SUVs form 40% of Volkswagen UK's current sales. So when they release a new one, chances are it's gonna sell like hair clippers at a Kojak convention. The new Tygo Coupe SUV has a mammoth task on its hands though, because there's a lot of competition from within the Volkswagen range. Firstly, we have the T-Cross, which has been around for a few years. It's on the same MQB 8O platform, and it's a little bit cheaper, but most competition comes from the million selling T-Roc. Now the Tygo has got a lot in common with the T-Roc, more than you might think, and it's actually significantly cheaper. Is this gonna be enough though to win over the typical T-Roc buyer? Well, today we're gonna to find out. Okay, before we start off with some statistics, I'd just like to say, if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, then please do so. If you have, big thanks, it does mean an awful lot. Big thanks also to Volkswagen UK for having me here today to review their cars, however, I want to. Right then, stats. Okay, we'll start off then with the Tygo versus the T-Cross. It's a bit tricky to compare it exactly because the T-Cross is still on the outdated trim levels of SE, Black Edition, SEL and R-Line, while the Tygo is Lifestyle and R-Line. The R-Line is the one we have today. As both have got an R-Line, it's easiest to use that for comparison. So let's start with the cheapest version, the one litre TSI manual. This is £27,560 for the T-Cross it's £27,845 for the Tygo, so just £285 extra. Let's have a look at fuel economy, because this is actually more interesting than you might think. So, the one litre TSI T-Cross does 47.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. The Tygo does 51.4, and that's the same engine and gearbox, just a different body, and the Tygo is 5% better on fuel. I can only put that down to the more aerodynamic shape, which we'll talk about later. CO2 emissions reflect this as well, with 134 grams per kilometer for the T-Cross and 125 grams per kilometer for the Tygo. Now let's look at the one liter TSI with the DSG gearbox. T-Cross does 44.1 miles per gallon. Tygo does 47.9. That's an even bigger gap of 7%. Finally, let's look at the range topping 1.5 TSI Evo DSG. It's 47.1 miles per gallon for the T-Cross, 48.7 for the Tygo. Go. And in both cases, whether it's T-Cross or Tygo, the 1.5 TSI DSG is significantly more efficient than the 1 litre TSI DSG, even though it's a lot more powerful. I can only put that down to the cylinder on demand technology. The Tygo is a little bit lighter, 28 kilograms lighter than the T-Cross. It's five and a half centimetres lower, which kind of does look really kind of obviously. This is a quite an interesting one. It's actually 16 centimetres longer than a T-Cross which um, does make up for some of that reduced height for the boot. So it's 455 litres for the T-Cross, 440 for the Tygo. So you do pay a little price in the boot capacity for that sleek and stylish, they say, roof line. Okay, now some stats on the Tygo versus the T-Rock. This is the big one, guys. Basically, if you want a two-litre diesel or a two-litre petrol or a four-wheel drive, you've got to have the T-Rock. So there's no competition in the Tygo range. But both models get the 1 litre TSI and the 1.5 TSI petrol engines. So let's compare each model's R-Line 1.5 TSI with the 7-speed DSG gearbox, starting with the price. For this top of the range Tygo, you're looking at £30,835. For the T-Roc, it's £33,430. So a £2,595 uplift for the T-Roc. Well, what does that actually get you? Well, we'll start off with fuel economy because this is pretty interesting. So on the combine cycle, once again, the Tygo will do 48.7 mpg. The T-Roc does 46.3, so around 5% worse. Again, this is reflected by the CO2 emissions, which were 132 grams per kilometer for the Tygo versus 138 for the T-Roc. The Tygo is a little bit lighter as well, which will help in efficiency, no doubt. The Tygo, quite surprisingly, is three centimeters longer than the T-Roc, but the T-Roc has 3.6 centimeters more within its wheelbase. Where the T-Roc really wins though is height and width. It's six and a half centimeters taller than the Tygo, although this only translates into two centimeters more inside the cabin because the ground clearance on the T-Roc is a little bit higher. It's also 6.2 centimetres wider, excluding the door mir mirrors, which means significantly more space for rear passengers. Boot volume, though, is surprisingly similar 
though, with the Tygo's lengths affording a generous 440 litres versus 445 for the T-Rock. So just five litres difference between these two, so probably not enough to influence your purchase. Performance-wise, the Tygo slippery shape gives it a top speed of 132 miles per hour compared to 129 for the T-Rock, so it's a little bit faster. But when it comes to the 0 to 62 sprint, however relevant that is, there's not a lot in it. They're exactly the same at 8.3 seconds, which is a usefully half a second faster than an up GTI to give you some context. Color choice, there's again not a lot in it. There's seven for the T-Rock, eight for the Tygo, the eight being this um, interesting shade of green. Spec-wise, again, it's really, really similar. Both get 17 inch wheels, 10 and a quarter inch digital cockpit pro, navigation system with wireless app connects, although only the Tygo gets wireless charging. It's a 365 pound option on the T-Rock, but the T-Rock does get heated seats as standard. That's a 350 pound option on the Tygo. So there's not a lot in it when it comes to what's on paper. Let's have a close look outside and inside to see if we can find some difference between these two SUVs. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an R-Line version of the T-Rock to compare with the R-Line Tygo. Here is an R-Line T-Rock Cabriolet to give you an idea what the R-Line looks like. Just imagine that with a metal roof. Okay, this is the style model, so it's not actually much cheaper than the R-Line. I think it might even be roughly the same price. And it's a more luxurious version than the R-Line, and it sits above the Life model in the range. Both of them have got entry-level Life models. Now. I first saw these in Milton Keynes when uh, T-Rock came over, the new model, a uh, left-hand drive one and a, and a right-hand drive Tygo, and I just found it hard to distinguish them. That's why I'm making this video, so we can actually see how they differ. Now at the front, correct me if I'm wrong, they look pretty similar. So not much there, but it's the profile really. You can see actually probably the T-Rock's a lot higher, the Tygo's a bit sleeker. It's um, definitely got a much sleeker rear profile. They call this more stylish, but I think that's subjective. It's maybe not, not as um, appealing to some, because I quite like the chunky looks of the T-Rock and the T-Cross, but they've made a lot of effort with the back. You've got this light bar, which looks really cool at night. You've got a full width reflector down there, a black inlay, which always looks pretty good. And it's gloss black on the back here. We've got these new style, um, what are they reflectors that are in a sort of O pattern? We've got matte black plastic down there and some aluminium but actually the rear end i think tell me if you disagree looks better than on the t-rock which hasn't really changed an awful lot in these style models compared to the old one i think this is a petrol blue and this is a special green color that escapes me right now but yeah i think it works and it's great the volkswagen giving us some unusual colors so yeah that's, uh, I think, a win for me personally on the outside for the Tygo. Okay, let's have a look inside. So this will be familiar to a lot of people with a million of these being sold. And it is a pretty nice place to be in here. So we haven't got haptic buttons on this one, which will be a win for a lot of people. We've got climate control down there, separate unlike Golf 8. We've got this very convincing stitch section on the dashboard, which looks like a Porsche extended leather. These seats are really nice, actually. Bear in mind, this is not the sporty one. They're yeah, really nice. Alcantara there, grippy fabric there, fake leather there, cloth around the back, front centre armrest in the sort of fake leather, piano black around there, six-speed manual on this car. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a nice cabin now. Virtual cockpit on both of them, ten and a quarter inch. Door cards are lovely with this uh, contrast stitching there. Let's have a look in the back, then, because... The T-Rock is usefully wider than the T-Cross, and that means you should have more room in here. So maybe not the best place to have three adults in the back. The headroom's pretty good though, because we don't have a sloping roof line. I reckon you could probably be quite happy with three sort of average size adults in there, just about. It's definitely a, a three belt on the back seat there. Not bad. Have a quick look in the boots. You open that with the Volkswagen logo. It's quite a high boot floor, this. It's up to my sort of waist almost. So that's kind of good for loading and unloading. There's loads of space down here, no spare wheel though, unfortunately, presumably that's available as an option. But you can use that space down there. 
So yeah, that's a big boot, but there's not a lot in it with the Tygo. Right, let's have a look inside the Tygo then. Now, interestingly, we've got the R-Line fabric because this is an R-Line, so that looks very much like Golf R-Line, even Golf R without the blue. We've got, yeah, a nice floor mat, sort of Golf spec carpet, contrast stitching on those floor mats. Floor cards are a little bit plain. There's no color, no splash of anything really on here. Fabric there, it is padded. This is rock hard. I do quite like the fact they're styling these bits now with a pattern which does make it look at least they've made some effort. Shock horror, we've got sill protectors here on the Tygo, but they're not going to do an awful lot of protection. They are quite small, but it's just a nice touch there. Again, no haptic buttons on the steering wheel. Is that a trend now? Just like the T-Rock, we've got a separate climate control panel, which is touch sensitive. Again, a manual gearbox here, start, stop, start and stop for the engine button down there. Manual handbrake, that is a difference. Some might prefer it, some might not. I actually like electronic parking brakes. That would actually put me off the Tygo, but maybe I'm just weird. In here, we've got a soft touch dash, which is quite nice. It doesn't have the fake stitching of the T-Rock, but it's still quite nice. And it's definitely a step up on the old T-Rock and the T-Cross. So yeah, interior quality in this R-Line, I don't find offensive at all. We've also got a sunroof here, which is always a nice touch. I think it's about a thousand pounds option. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, mm, surprised by the angle of this parking brake. Uh, but there we go, yeah, it's just been put on firmly, I guess, to stop people having a mishap. Glove box unlined, but slightly damped. It's pretty good. Let's see what it's like in the back then. So we're a little bit narrower in the Tygo. Can you tell? As I get, you know, notice a bit of an unfortunate sheen here on the plastic. So this is definitely a downgraded door card. This is hard plastic, but that still feels good quality like the front ones. That's good. Still got a pattern down there, but yeah, look at the sheen on that. That's pretty, pretty nasty. Okay, actually, there's not an awful lot in it. Again, you can you've got three seat belts across the back. Um, headroom does feel a little bit tighter. You couldn't wear a hat very easily in this car, I think. Uh, we've also got the sunroof, which may not help, but it does allow light to bleed into the cabin. And uh, yeah, it's not bad. I think if you're going to carry three in the back, then maybe T-Rock would be a better bet, but this is far from awful. And finally, the boot. So there's a release under here, not the Volkswagen badge, rear camera there, which is an option. And here, again, the boot's quite high in this setting, a little bit lower than the T-Rock. And under here, we've got a spare wheel and the, I think the Beat Sound Pack subwoofer just there. So we can still go lower. And that's why the boot space, I think, is just five litres smaller than the T-Rock. So don't think this is a smaller car when it comes to boot capacity or even the cabin. OK, let's now go for a drive and see if we can find some discernible difference between these two SUVs. OK, here we are driving then the Tygo. I thought I'd start off with this. We've got the 1 litre TSI 110 horsepower, 6 speed manual gearbox in R line specification. It's basically the Up GTI engine, and when you work it hard, it makes that Poundland 911 noise the Up GTI is so famous for, but it's very subdued in this car. You can't really hear it. It is lacking a bit of character in that respect. On the plus side, even if you put it in the sportiest of driving modes, sport, we've got eco, normal and sport, as well as individual, there's no fake noise. So that's a good thing. And it is very refined. They've clearly spent a lot of time making this car refined. I think it's aerodynamics help. It's a very windy day today and it's good. We've got a sunroof as well, which admittedly is closed, but the blind is open. I'm very happy with the levels of noise in this car. It's surprisingly good for a car on the lowly AO platform. Gear shift is lovely as well. They've had decades to perfect it, and I think they have now. It's not the fastest car though. It's about 20% heavier than that GTI, and I'm not sure the 0 to 60, but it's gonna be about nine something. It feels probably getting closer to 10. The gears are quite long as well as they are in the modern way. Um, but 
it's okay, it's adequate. If you want more performance, buy the 1.5 TSI with 150 horsepower. You get that with a seven speed DSG as well, and that would really shift 0 to 60 and 8.3 in that. This is okay, it's a little bit better on fuel. And being manual, it's better on fuel as well. The olden days of DSGs being more economical seem to have gone now. They're testing cars on the road. So we're in sixth gear now that you can't really tell what gear you're in. That's fourth. Does that sound different to six? No. We're doing 70 miles an hour and it's a windy day. So there's a little bit of rustling, but no, it's pretty good. By the way, if you hate lane assist, button on the end of the stop, press that, press OK on the steering wheel, press that again, and it's gone. So it has got an easy switch off, but it does turn on every time you drive the car. But actually it doesn't seem too intrusive. We're on 18 inch wheels, which are an upgrade, hand-cooked tires. We've got the MQB AO platform, which means we haven't got DCC. That's not even an option on this car. And it rides actually really well. There's some twisty roads over towards um, Banbury that I've just driven on. If you know it, it's, it's by the, the recycling center and it felt really good through there there's a bit of roll a bit of float but it felt okay and on some bumpy roads it's riding really really well which i was a little bit worried about our line spec means it's sporty 18 inch wheels mean less sidewall and torsion beam rear suspension usually means a bit of a rough ride but they know their market and they've made it handle adequately and ride really quite well actually so i'm pleasantly surprised with that the only shortcoming i think is that it just feels a bit flat although actually now the torque's kicking in in six gear there's still quite a lot of urgency for motorway use i am in six aren't i yeah yes yeah, well let me demonstrate that's 60 i'll put my foot to the boards a bit of lag do, 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 do. One, and go 70 so if you're on a motorway you won't feel too lacking in power it's plenty fine actually and if the gear change is so nice you might even just want to change a couple of gears down to get a bit more performance but you don't need to yeah it's a surprisingly good all-rounder this Tygo but is it better than the T-Rock well, let's go and drive that and find out And the brakes are pretty good as well. <laughs> okay guys, so T-Rock then, this one's not a perfect match for the Tygo. It's a 1.5 TSI, 150 horsepower. It's got the same six-speed manual gearbox, but it's a style trim, not an R-line. So we've got a bit more punch in this car. The Tygo was 110, this is 150. It feels all of the 40 horsepower faster, actually. The Tygo could feel strange. This, in most situations, for most drivers, will feel more than adequate. What's kind of disappointing, though, is it, that it loses the character of that three-cylinder engine, and it replaced it with just a normal four-cylinder coarseness, which isn't particularly present, pleasant, but it's all well-subdued. Road noise, wind noise, engine noise. It's quite refined, though. Is it any more refined than the Tygo? I'm not completely sure it is. Gearbox feels the same. Clutch, again, feels heavier than I would expect, but it's okay. I think, though, I'd go for a DSG in this car, but that's just my personal preference, and that would work better with the electric parking brake, I think, as well. We do sit higher, though, actually. It does feel more like an SUV than... The Tygo, that doesn't, you don't really sit there thinking, oh yeah, I am quite high up compared to a normal car. The Tygo's quite low and it is low externally as well. So if you want a higher driving position, this really is sort of the lowest car I'd recommend. Now let's do 60 to 70 again in sixth. Let's make sure we're in sixth, that's sixth. And here we go, foot to the boards. Lag, 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 lag. And 70. So that seemed a little bit quicker dashboard now how come the tiger has got a better dash than the t-rock it's if you got a better dash than t-cross as well okay the t-rock has got this lovely fake stitching on it but it does go to hard plastic under the air lay air vents and the inlays well 
The Tygo is soft touch down there as well. It only goes cheap at the glove box level. So whilst the stitching is lovely, I'd definitely trade it for a soft touch down here because I don't like this bit of plastic down here. It's very visible and very shiny. Other than that, well, we've got independent, we haven't got independent rear suspension, even though we've got the MQB platform that goes all the way up to the Volkswagen Multivan. This has still got the torsion beam, which we had in the Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4, 4 Golf. It's the change to independent in the Mark 5 that made it so good, but Volkswagen have been very careful where they fit it on their models because they don't think a lot of drivers will benefit from it. And on this style model, they could be right, really. It's, it's a soft car. I've driven it on the twisty bits again, and it does roll a lot more. And whilst it is more comfortable, it does feel floaty. So a passenger may prefer a bit more bumpiness than the float you get in a car this soft. So whether it's independent or torsion beam at the back, it's not such an issue with this car. It would be with an R-Line. So I wonder if the R-Line 150 is independent, but I'd be very, very surprised if it is. So we've got the same traditional headlight switch. We've got a slightly different way of turning the lane assist off. I know that's important to a lot of you guys. No button on the end of the stalk. You have to go to the assist systems part of the virtual cockpit and then use the OK button to turn it on and off, which is a little bit more involved, but I'm sure it becomes second nature. But like in the Tiger and on most modern cars, it does come on every time you turn the ignition on. Climate control panel is identical. We don't have driving modes at all, which is a bit of a shame because the steering is a bit lighter than I'd like it and a sport mode would maybe make it a little bit harder like it does in the Tygo. It's not as light as the Tygo is in normal mode, but it's not one for the keen drivers this. So our line is definitely money well spent. So yeah, is this worth two to three grand more than a Tygo? I'm not so sure, you know, if it had independent rear suspension, then maybe that would be a bit of a unique selling point. But other than that, it doesn't feel that different. And some people may well prefer the looks of the Tygo. It's certainly, for the moment, going to be a lot rarer than the T-Rock, which is everywhere, both here in the UK and particularly in Europe, where it's outselling the Golf in Germany. The Tygo, I don't think it'll last very long, but it is quite a rare and interesting car. So, um, yeah, it's a really, really tough choice. The T-Rock has sold over a million units worldwide and currently outsells the Golf in its home market. So I think it's fair to assume it's a good car and often decent value for money. But on what I've seen today, the Tygo seemed even better in this regard. Okay, it's a little bit smaller, so it could be a bit of a squeeze for three rear passengers. It's also being based on the MQB AO platform, means that we don't have independent rear suspension on the more powerful models, and we don't have an electric parking brake, which once you get used to, is actually quite good. But if the T-Rock is good value for money, then the Tygo must be a real bargain. So what about the cheaper T-Cross then? Well, VW Bill, the Tygo is the more stylish alternative to the T-Cross due to its swoopy coupe rear styling. But as ever, looks are subjective and I prefer the chunky looks of the T-Cross, but they do come at a price. The greater aerodynamic drag of the T-Cross means it uses significantly more fuel than the Tygo. And for a lot of people, the Tygo will be a win-win because you get better fuel consumption and you get better looks. So expect to see them everywhere very soon. As ever, guys, thanks for watching this Volkswagen video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment, please do share, please do subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.